Bill Bailey, and this is Vertzine, the magazine, online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. I'm glad you could join us for this week's edition. We're going to get right into Vertzine. And by the way, the Vertzine blog is at V-I-R-T-I, hold on, let me think. V-I-R-T-Z-I-N-E. I knew that didn't quite sound right. I had to stop and think, wait a minute. Z-I-N-E. Vertzine.com. I'll put it on the screen here to alleviate any confusion. So, anyway. Wow. Um, Vertzine. Last, the last episode of our netcast was Vertzine number 17, the Data in the Cloud edition. Today we're going to be talking about some stories from the blog at vertzine.com. VMware Solution Exchange for Virtualization and Cloud Solutions. VMware has opened a new marketplace for solutions in cloud computing and virtualization. And think of it kind of like a, almost like an app store, but it's really uh, where you can exchange ideas in the online marketplace. Uh, and it will help attract new customers and fend off competition from Red Hat, Microsoft, and IBM. We've been talking a little bit about Red Hat's foray into virtualization with their Red Hat Enterprise virtualization product. And, uh, you know, it's making VMware kind of step up their game, which is good. Again, competition's a good thing. VMware is joining a number of other virtualization and cloud vendors in trying to leverage online marketing muscle to expand its customer base while offering new products to its partners and developers. On January 25th, VMware officially launched its Solution Exchange, an online virtualization and cloud marketplace that is designed to help customers, partners, and developers locate and purchase VMware certified products. Pretty neat. All right, next item we're going to look at here is Amazon Storage Gateway for Secure Low Latency Storage. Now. Think of this as an Amazon appliance that sits in your network <clears throat> where you can transfer <clears throat> excuse me, files into that appliance and then it will connect to the cloud storage that Amazon offers uh, and basically allow a much quicker um, transfer of that data in the sense that when you initiate it, it goes automatically through this cloud storage device, which is pretty neat. Amazon Web Services is rolling out a new feature called Storage Gateway that lets companies upload data to its cloud storage services directly from their own premises storage systems, the company said on Wednesday. AWS's goals with Storage Gateway appear to be threefold, cloud backup, cloud bursting, and ultimately primary cloud storage <clears throat> all without having to worry about latency, which of course is a big concern, and this is going to be addressing that. So it's pretty neat, pretty neat idea. Uh, let's go to our next item here. A pre-configured cloud from Dell. Think of it as kind of a cloud on a box, okay? Dell is packaging the hardware and the software necessary to create a private cloud so to speak, in a box. As part of the virtualization made easy push, Dell announced their new vSTART 200 package, which brings out of the box support for up to 200 VMs using Microsoft or VMware technologies right out of the box. This means that the hardware has been certified to work with both vSphere and Microsoft's Hyper-V hypervisor. The vSTART line also features or includes pre-configured packages targeted to supporting 50 to 100 VMs. Kind of interesting. I suspect it's aimed at businesses that don't have internal uh, VMware or Microsoft hypervisor expertise because you can buy the hardware, but you've got to have somebody that knows how to manage it and knows how to put it in, in place. And so that's why I think packaging it uh, is probably a good marketing idea for Dell to offer that. All right, next article, five free virtualization tools for your arsenal. And I just talked about the fact you need people to support a virtualized environment. Well, people who support virtualized environments need the tools to help manage them. 
and these are free virtualization tools that are available. Uh, the first one is Nick Weaver's Uber Network Fuser. Uh, this is a virtual network editor that's missing from VMware's Fusion on the Mac. And uh, the author of this article says he tried it and has a video of how it works posted on his website. So I suggest you click on the link here and check that out. Also, Nick Weaver's Uber Align. Uber Align comes as a two-piece tool made up of a virtual appliance server and a Windows GUI client. The tool is used to align virtual machine disk files of both Windows and Linux VMs. By properly aligning virtual disk files that were misaligned, you can gain significant performance. And uh, the tool is on the scale of an inexpensive, or excuse me, of an expensive commercial tool with its virtual appliance remote console and support for multiple simultaneous alignments across multiple virtual machines at the same time. So, good uh, free tool that does the work of a lot of commercial tools, so pretty neat. Uh, next one is SolarWinds Winds VM to Cloud Calculator, a SolarWinds tool which compares the cost of moving to the cloud across multiple providers including Rackspace, Amazon's EC2, and Windows Azure. So, you can figure out in advance how much it's going to cost to move to the cloud. Pretty neat. Next one, ESXi Customizer. This allows you to customize the VMware ESXi 5 installation ISO to include drivers that are not originally included. So you can actually customize the ISO and make your installations quicker and easier for uh, ESXi. Next one is vKernel's vScope. A virtual appliance that analyzes your virtual infrastructure and tells you which virtual machines have performance issues using a heat map where the VMs with the greatest problems rise to the top. Okay, so you can download that and use it. Um, IO Analyzer, another one for VMware Labs. IO Analyzer is a virtual appliance that measures storage performance. Now, his article here says that VMware Labs also has 30 plus free tools. Many of them uh, released or updated in the last six months. So check out this article. There's a link here in my article to it, and I encourage you to check it out because a lot of these tools really are indispensable. All right, next item. Got a lot of stuff this week. Amazon S3 had remarkable growth in 2011. Now, I've been playing with Amazon S3, and I got to admit, I'm pretty impressed with what it can do. Now, Think about this, in 2011, they had, uh, let's see, ch -ch -ch. by the end of 2011, there were 762 billion, with a B, objects in Amazon S3. Wow. Now, that's 500,000 requests per second for these objects at peak times. That's just amazing. The, the amount, not only the amount of storage, but the fact that they can have that much in the cloud and the response time be uh, as good as it is, it's just amazing to me. So uh, they've had a remarkable growth in 2011 and I think they're gonna see tremendous growth this year as, as well in 2012. Finally, our last item here, Amazon announces new edge locations for CloudFront and Route 53. Now. CloudFront is a really neat concept. Let me tell you just a little bit about it. I'm going to put my tablet over here so I can use my hands. I like to talk with my hands. The thing about CloudFront is, think of it this way. When, if I'm here in North Carolina and I request a file, obviously if the file is located, let's say, in Greensboro, and I have to download that file and it's as close as Greensboro, I'm going to get better performance across the web than if the file was in Hong Kong, okay? But if the user is in Hong Kong and the file's in Greensboro, they've got the problem with file transfer, whereas if it were actually resident right there in Hong Kong, they would get it much faster. You see what I'm saying? So the whole idea of CloudFront is to have endpoint locations all over the globe, and then as people from around the globe click on a link to view a video or whatever, or listen to a sound file or whatever it is, it's delivered to them from a more local or localized location. So what, they, what they're saying here in this story is that they've opened up a lot of new locations, including Osaka in um, 
Japan, and Milan in, uh, where would that be? Milan would be in Italy, I guess, um, which is their first location in Italy. So good, that confirmed that. <laughs> I want to be sure I was saying the right thing there. Uh, Amazon CloudFront and Amazon Route 53 now have a total of 26 Edge locations worldwide. Each Edge location helps lower latency and improves performance for end users. So if I store my video file, like this file that I'm recording right now, if I store that file in S3 and then incorporate the CloudFront technology, it will be streamed out and saved in these edge front locations all around the world and then it will sense when a user from a various location accesses the file and deliver it to them locally with less latency than if they had to go all the way across the world. See what I'm saying? Neat technology. Very handy. I, I'm actually torn right now as to whether to use that technology to help distribute this video netcast. Uh, and I'm working with that now. I'm trying to figure out how much it's going to cost and whether it would be cost effective to do that. So stay tuned as to whether we're going to do that or not. Right now, it's coming all from one location. So uh, matter of fact, toward that end, it would be great if you would let me know. You could write me at drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at vertzine, V-I-R-T-Z-I-N-E, dot com. I'll put it up right here. Send me an email and tell me where in the world you're watching the program and how your performance is in terms of it streaming down to you. It'll help me figure out whether it's useful to do this transition to their technology there at Amazon. Okay? Sounds good. All right, well, remember until next time, keep your head in the cloud.